Welcome to the Bright Insight Digital Health C-Suite Series. I'm Jamie Burgess, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Bright Insight. Joining me at the NASDAQ Broadcast Studio from the 42nd Annual JP Morgan Healthcare Conference is Amr Goyal, CEO and co-founder of Vito. Amr, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, excited. So tell us a little bit about Vito. Yeah, so Vito is focused on helping software developers and we are really building kind of what we think is the next generation of tooling and capabilities to use Gen AI to help developers become dramatically more productive and creative and efficient. You are an AI and generative AI expert. Can you help for us lay people uh, define the differences between the two? Sure, I can try. I don't know if I'm an expert, but yeah, so AI really is what we think about as AI today is, is certain kinds of models. They're typically uh, deep learning, neural network based models. So a neural network is, the term is really coming from trying to simulate the neurons in your brain. So you think about those electric signals go from one node to another node to another node. That's kind of what's happening in a neural network based model. So that's kind of AI <laughs> in 10 seconds. And then Gen AI, generative AI, is a subset of broader AI. And these are neural network, these models that can output uh, words, so text, images, audio, and so really that's kind of what generative AI, they generate content. Really what happens in these models is that they're a prediction model, so you give it a phrase or you give it a hundred pages and it can then out predict the next word and then the word after that. You come from a space outside of healthcare. What are one or two of the most interesting examples you've seen of Gen AI? There's lots of things happening in lots of different areas, but I think some of the examples that seem really interesting are in some ways like simplest to understand, but I think very powerful. So I have two boys who are 10 and 12, and uh, my 10 year old is using Khan Academy, which is I'm sure most people know what that is, but you know, it's kind of an online platform to learn many different subjects. They've added languages, but it started with math. They launched, I don't know what the exact term is, but a, a kind of Gen AI based tutor. And so for any topic that you were learning, let's just to take a super simple example, you're learning double digit, you know, 56 plus 23, and you're getting stuck, this tutor could sort of personalize, take you through that. And based on the, what mistakes you're making, can actually recommend, you know, a new exercise or another problem or, or whatever. So I think personalized education and sort of democratizing access to education seems like a really powerful capability, like for pretty inexpensively, everyone can have a personal tutor on any subject. That seems incredible, you know? So I think that's kind of, you know, one thing. And that's, by the way, just text, but imagine as video and, and imagery, audio gets better. You know, some people learn auditorily, some people want to watch something, some people want to read something. You can have a personalized tutor. So that's that seems one, obviously we're here talking about healthcare, you know, I think personalized diagnosis or, you know, personalized kind of uh, using that to, again, democratize access to healthcare seems pretty incredible. I mean, there's many different uses in healthcare, but that's, I think, one that is going to take probably the longest amount of time, but seems, you know, very powerful. And then, of course, we, you know, Bitto, we live in the world of software. So, you know, the idea that you could give a requirement, you could say, hey, I want an application that does X, and then something like Bitto could automatically write the the code to do that and again we want to get it you can do that for simple things you want to make it more complex enterprise type capabilities but all of those seem like they could really change how the world works so you shared a couple examples of you know how gen ai can be applied in life sciences with diagnosis in our previous conversations you likened where the life sciences industry is in terms of generative ai uh, to the development of the microprocessor. And I thought that was fascinating. Can you walk us through that analogy? You know, the transistor was invented in 1947. And actually when it was first invented, it was such an odd invention that like nobody really knew what to do with it. And so it was just sort of like, huh, that's this interesting thing over there. And then the integrated circuit was invented by this guy, Jack Kilby in 1958. And that's, you know, those two inventions really power kind of are the root of all of our computing, internet, kind of all of the technology that we that we have today. And so if you if you kind of look at Gen AI today and you say, oh well, you can't do this, or I, I gave it this question and it didn't really answer that well or gave me the wrong answer, or whatever. I, I mean that's totally I'm not taking anything away from that. It didn't work 
great today. But I think you have to look at like the journey that we're on. And so if you look at how computing's increasing, but then also these models are getting better, I think in you know, four years, you'll have models that are 10 or 15 times, you know, more powerful than they are today, you know? So maybe that's GPT-6 or something will be, you know, 10 or 15 times more powerful. And if you go out maybe 10 years, you might be looking at models that are maybe like 500 times more powerful than they are today. You know, it's, it's pretty, you know, exponential, the growth. When you think about it like that, then I think the capabilities that are possible over time, you know, become pretty striking and so again I wouldn't just be thinking about where we are today you know from a life sciences or healthcare perspective but you know where are we going to be in three years five years ten years because I think that is where you know organizations can really benefit in a significant way. Do you think the biopharma industry is ready to take advantage of AI and generative AI today? I would have to say no not not really and I think Part of it is that, you know, what, what I've seen just over time is that people who really are good at software, they tend to really like focus on it. People coming from other industries don't tend to like be as adept at it. Just like if you put a software industry person into biopharma and said, hey, yep. you know, good luck. <laughs> They're just kind of like, I don't yeah. get how this works. Right. You know, healthcare and biopharma is physical in nature in terms of like, you know, you're dealing with biology and chemistry and you know it's not just bits that you're kind of thinking about that's where I think a lot of times there's a few people who understand both worlds you know for whatever reason they somehow understand software and they understand you know chemistry or biology and vice versa and then and that's sometimes where startups tend to really create new innovative things because they're like a little bit trying something random and have that freedom and leeway to, to do something unique. And are there any other industries, so your company works well with Fortune 100s, right? Are there any other industries that are highly regulated like healthcare that you think our industry could use as an analogy or to learn from? Sure, so I actually, you know, you'd asked me this question before, so I was thinking about it and I said, oh, let me ask ChatGPT what it what it thinks. Cool. Love so it. I, so I took the, I took the text, it gave me a pretty long answer actually. Um, I won't read it all, but it says, generative AI has the potential to revolutionize various industries and several sectors can be serve as models for healthcare and life sciences companies. Here are a few examples. Love it. So it said, number one, the automotive industry. The use of generative AI in automotive design and manufacturing can be a model for healthcare. AI driven simulations and generative design algorithms allow for the creation of more efficient and safer vehicles. Similarly, healthcare can use these methods for drug design, creating medical equipment, or optimizing hospital layouts for better patient care. I'll just read one more, they had a bunch of them, but finance and banking. AI and finance is used for fraud detection, risk assessment, and personalized customer services. In healthcare, similar AI algorithms can be applied for fraud detection and billing, risk assessment in patient care, like predicting disease outbreaks or patient deterioration, and personalizing patient care plans. So I thought that was not a bad start, you know? No, mind blown. <laughs> Amir, thank you so much for being here. Very excited for what the future holds with generative AI and healthcare.